Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about mixtures of gases and then we're also going to talk about partial pressures uh, which are properties concerned with uh, individual gases within a mixture of gases. So most of the time when you have a sample of gas there isn't just one gas in there, there is a mixture of gases within that container. Even the air around us that we're breathing in right now is actually a mixture of gases, it's not just a pure sample of one individual gas. So if we look at this pie chart here uh, that sort of breaks down the composition of dry air, uh, so again, we're assuming that the air is dry, there's no water molecules floating around in that air, which uh, where I live here in Florida is pretty unlikely, it's very humid down here. Uh, but anyway, if the air is dry, uh, then the air is made up of the following components. Uh, we can see that nitrogen gas is by far the largest component of the air, coming in at 78%. Uh, the second largest component of the air is oxygen at 21%. Uh, we got a little bit of argon in there, almost 1% argon, and then there's a small amount of carbon dioxide in the air, 0.04% of our air uh, is carbon dioxide. And then the rest of the air, the 0.06% left over, uh, is a mixture of uh, other gases that are present in very, very small amounts. So again, we're going to talk about mixtures of gases such as air, and we're going to talk about partial pressures, and we're going to be able to derive an expression uh, for partial pressure and to be able to understand what it means and also uh, to do some calculations involving partial pressures. So what a partial pressure is, uh, and it has the symbol P sub N, is the pressure that is exerted by a single component in a mixture of gases. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make some simplifying assumptions about a mixture of gases. We're going to assume that all of the mixture, or excuse me, all of the gases within that mixture uh, behave as an ideal gas. They're going to display ideal gas behavior. And what that means is that each gas within the mixture is going to behave independently of the other gases that are in there. So each gas is going to act as if it were the only gas in that container. So that's what we call ideal gas behavior. So again, if we have a mixture of uh, gases a, B, and C, let's say, and we apply the ideal gas law to see if we can't get an expression for the partial pressure of each individual gas. Well, remember, the ideal gas law, that's PV equals NRT. And so to solve for pressure, we would simply divide both sides of that ideal gas law equation by volume. So for instance, if I wanted the partial pressure of gas A, it would just be, again, dividing ideal gas law, both sides of it, by the volume, and you would get the amount of A in moles multiplied by RT over V. If we wanted the partial pressure of gas B, it would be very similar. It would be the amount of B in moles times RT over V. And then, yep, you guessed it. If we wanted the partial pressure of C, it would simply be the amount of C in moles multiplied by the quantity of RT over V. So these are going to be the expressions to determine uh, the partial pressure of each individual gas within a mixture. It's also true that if these gases display this ideal gas behavior where they're each behaving independently of the other gases, it's also true that the total pressure in that container that has that mixture of gases is going to be equal to the sum of the partial pressures. So P total equals the pressure of A plus the pressure of B plus the pressure of C plus the pressure of any additional gas that might be in that mixture. And this relationship where the total pressure is the sum of the partial pressures, that is what we call Dalton's Law of partial pressures. So we have two useful equations here. We have uh, an equation that gives us an expression for the partial pressure of each gas, and then we have an equation uh, that basically equates the sum, again, the sum of the partial pressures, which is equal to the total pressure. So let's see if we can't sort of manipulate these equations uh, to derive another equation that might be useful to us and allow us to do some pretty easy calculations. So again, a moment ago we established that the total pressure is equal to the sum of the partial pressures. And what we can do now is we can uh, substitute the expressions for the partial pressures into this equation. So again, it's going to be the amount in moles of each gas multiplied by RT over V. If you add those all together, then you'll get the total pressure. And we can actually manipulate this equation and clean it up a little bit by factoring out that RV, RT over V term. So because all of these uh, three terms that we're adding together here all include that RT over V factor, we can actually pull that out and 
the resulting uh, equation looks like this, where you have the quantity of all of the individual uh, molar amounts of each of these gases. That quantity is now multiplied by that RT over V term. So we have Na plus Nb plus Nc plus N of however many other gases are in the mixture, and that whole quantity is multiplied by RT over V. And this simplifies a little bit further down when we make the assumption that all of these uh, moles of gases added together, if we assume that to be the total moles, then it becomes N total, the total amount of moles of all the gases in the mixture, times RT over V. That's going to also be equal to the total pressure. Now, another thing that we can do that makes things a little bit easier and a little bit more interesting is we can try this. We can divide the partial pressure of a gas uh, by the total pressure of that container. So let's say we're talking about gas A. What's going to happen if we divide the partial pressure of A by the total pressure? Well again, the partial pressure of A, that's going to be given by the amount in moles of A times RT over V. The total pressure, like we looked at uh, just now when we derived the expression, that's going to be the total amount of moles of all of the gases together times RT over V. And this uh, expression simplifies even further because those RT over V terms are going to cancel. And that's going to give us the amount in moles of gas A over the total moles of all the gases in the container. Now this thing, this uh, division right here, this uh, ratio, the, uh, the ratio of the amount in moles of one gas divided by the amount in moles of all the gases together, uh, this is what we call the, par uh, the uh, mole fraction of the component. So here we have an expression for the mole fraction of a component. And the symbol for mole fraction is this X looking symbol over here. That is a Greek lowercase chi. So chi is the mole fraction. Again, that's the, mole, that's the uh, amount in moles of your individual component divided by the total amount in moles of all of those gases that are in that container. So now we have an expression for the mole fraction, and what we can do even further is we can take the side of the equation uh, down here that's all the way on the left, that PA over P total, we can take that and we can equate it to chi, we can equate it to uh, the mole fraction. So if we do that, we have PA over P total equals chi sub A, so again, that is the partial pressure of A divided by the total pressure is equal to the mole fraction of A. And then finally, if we multiply this new equation, if we multiply both sides of it by the total pressure, we get this relationship right here, where the partial pressure of A is equal to the mole fraction of A times the total pressure. So if you know how many moles of gas are in that system, if you know how many moles of A are in that system and you know how many total moles are in that system, you can, and you also know the total pressure uh, of that uh, container, then you can easily determine the partial pressure of A by simply multiplying the mole fraction of A by that total pressure. Okay, so that was a huge mouthful and a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, interesting derivation stuff there. Uh, let's go ahead and do an example of a problem using partial pressures and then we'll be all done. So this problem says that we have a 5.00 liter vessel and it's got some helium, some krypton, and some xenon inside of it. And the total pressure of this container is 5.00 atmospheres and the temperature is 273.15 kelvins. And it says that if the partial pressures of helium and krypton are 2.42 atmospheres and 1.71 atmospheres respectively, then how many moles of xenon are gonna be in this mixture? So again, if you look at this, it might look a little intimidating, like where the heck do I start? Uh, but as long as we use those relationships that we just discussed, uh, we should be okay trying to figure out how many moles of xenon are in this. Well, we know that the total pressure of this, uh, which is given by the way, is gonna be equal to the sum of the partial pressures. So we got the total pressure equal to the partial pressure of helium plus the partial pressure of krypton plus the partial pressure of xenon. And the thing that's unknown in this entire equation is the partial pressure of xenon. So maybe the partial pressure of xenon can be used to determine how many moles of xenon are in this container. So if we uh, manipulate this equation algebraically, we can subtract both sides of the equation by 
the partial pressure of helium plus the partial pressure of krypton, and we're going to get that the partial pressure of xenon is the total pressure minus the sum of the partial pressures of helium and krypton. So if we fill those numbers in, it's going to be the total pressure, 5.00 atmospheres, minus the sum of 2.42 atmospheres and 1.71 atmospheres. And that's going to turn out to be 0 0.87 atmospheres. So now we have the partial pressure of xenon. Now that we have the partial pressure of xenon, uh, we can use an expression that we looked at in uh, the previous slides of how do, you, how do you use the ideal gas law to express the partial pressure of each gas. Well, the partial pressure of xenon is going to be equal to the amount in moles of xenon times RT over V according to the ideal gas law. So again, we're making the assumption here that all three of these gases are behaving as ideal gases. Uh, and so if we um, manipulate this equation, all we got to do is solve for n. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both sides by the volume, divide both sides by the product of R and T, and that's going to get that the amount of xenon in moles equals the partial pressure of xenon times the volume divided by the product of the ideal gas constant R and the temperature T. And now all we have to do is just plug in those numbers and evaluate the expression. So again, partial pressure of xenon, we just figured that out. That's 0 0.87 atmospheres. Uh, the volume, which is given, that's 5.00 liters. Uh, on the bottom there, the ideal gas constant, that never changes. It's always going to be 0 0.08206 liters atmospheres over moles kelvins. And then that's going to be multiplied by the temperature again, which is also given. That is 273.15 kelvins. So it looks like the atmospheres are going to cancel, the liters are going to cancel, and the kelvins are also going to cancel. And finally, uh, we're going to keep this to two significant figures. Uh, if we just punch it into a calculator, round it to two sig figs, uh, the answer will be 0 0.19 moles of xenon. And of course, we could, if we wanted to, we could convert that into a mass of xenon. Uh, if, as long as we had a periodic table handy, we could figure out the molar mass of, he of xenon and then convert that 0.19 moles uh, to mass, or to grams rather. So again, uh, that's one example of using partial pressures. Uh, there are other ways to use partial pressures. We didn't really go into that whole mole fraction relationship here. Uh, but again, as long as you understand the formulas and you understand how to derive the formulas, uh, you should be able to solve any kind of problem involving uh, partial pressures. You just got you just got to pay really close attention uh, to what the problem is giving you and what it's asking for. All right, that is it. So, ciao.